Hey everyone. So recently I was on Facebook Marketplace and I saw an ad for this lady who was selling a few magazines um, and some of them were dated back to the 80s. So I said, hey, I would be interested in getting these magazines just so I can check them out for interest sake. Well, when we went to pick them up, there was more than a few. There was like Ma hundreds of hundreds magazines. of magazines and books and patterns that this lady was just kind of getting rid of and she wanted it to go to somebody who would get use out of it well I'm overwhelmed with the amount of magazines that I got um, but honestly I've been looking through them and it's so exciting because these are from this guy right here this magazine is the uh, spring summer issue 19. 86 for Vogue Knitting International. I mean, the information and just patterns and everything in these magazines is exciting and overwhelming. So I thought she wanted me to get use out of it. She wanted it to go to somebody who would do something with it. So here I am. I've decided that I'm going to make just videos upon videos sharing with you these magazines and books, maybe going through, we'll knit some patterns together. There's some cool retro things in here that we'll find. Um, so stay tuned, subscribe. I'm going to be posting these videos and sharing the patterns in all of these magazines. So if you see something you like, at the end of the video, I'm going to do still shots so that you um, can see all of those patterns and everything. So right now I'm just going to go through this magazine right here, the Spring Summer 1986 Vogue Knitting issue, uh, and we'll read through some of the articles together, really interesting stuff in here, and we'll point out which pattern will go with which one at the end so you can be sure to find it. Mark it down as I say it. So if I say um, this pattern is the first pattern, number one, number two, they're all labeled. And then you can just find it at the end of the video. So here we go. Let's get started. So Vogue Knitting International Spring Summer 1986. So first of all, when I open this, I'm like, hello, 80s. I love it. Do you guys remember the 80s with these um, hairdos and frizzing your hair and lots of hairspray? I love it. It brings back so many memories. Uh, some of the styles here, too, in the sweaters, really bright colors. I remember that in the 80s. Like this lady here with the polka dots. Love that in the 80s. Brings back a ton of memories. Uh, so these are just some ads here for other knitting magazines or books that you can buy. This is just people uh, wrote in just talking about other things that they would like to see in other future issues. Um, the one lady pointed out that there was a mistake made or something in one of the last issues um, for one of the patterns and stuff like that. So people just writing in, but look at this font even. Isn't that, and the headers and everything, it's so, things have really changed and updated. This kind of looks more like a newspaper kind of article or something. And then this fashion here, those colors, actually that's kind of pretty with the uh, kind of cable in the front there with the stripes on it. That's a nice idea. Oh, and there's cables on the sleeves too here it looks like. Earrings, I remember those, those bangles, love it. Just more ads, it looks like, here. Love in the 80s, belt around the sweater. Quick, cool cottons. So, yeah, they talk a lot about the different yarns and everything that you can use and how to block them for the patterns at the back. Oh, I love this. Look at these. This is kind of that new um, fashion so that you wouldn't have all the puff stitches kind of. But I've seen this out right now with the, the puffs, these little balls, popcorn kind of stitches on just the sleeves. And then this here would be more of just a flat kind of surface. But 
that's kind of come back a little bit, those popcorn stitches into the into the more recent trends. Plaid, I mean, you can't go wrong with plaid, really, right? That's interesting. I, at first when I saw that one, I thought, is that a spill on the magazine? But no, that's actually part of the sweater that they've knit in there. So it's got a very droopy neck and then they've filled it in with this kind of splatter look. Okay, this lady's fun. Check out the coloring. Can you guys see that good on the camera? Yeah, the coloring in these, even the not so many touch-ups and stuff that they did back in the 80s or Photoshop. That's fun. Yes! Do you guys remember Walkmans? Oh my gosh, and the hat on sideways like that? That is fabulous. So I know in the front, the one lady was asking when they wrote into the editors that article about more sweaters that they could wear to work or evening, like a more dynamic. And they said that this this issue was supposedly full of sweaters that you could make for work and for the evening. And that there's really easy patterns as well for beginners um, to make up. So I think this is just advertising a certain yarn here that gives that sweater some pop. This ad I found interesting. It was about starting your own yarn and needle craft shop to become a, I guess, an owner of one of those stores. Okay, so here I've got this article marked. This article was good. I liked it. So this one here was all about increasing and decreasing according to the style. So it says that the little touches like the way you work increases and decreases make a big difference when you're aiming for a highly detailed look. Once you know several ways to increase and decrease, you can leave them unnoticed or use them to decoratively outline the shape of your garment. So then it goes through and it gives you different um, slants on your increases and then it goes through some decreases as well. So, I know this is mainly geared towards if you are a right-handed knitter. I myself am a left-handed knitter. Um, I'm a good old lefty. So I have, I'm gonna put the link down below to this amazing website that I always kind of reference back to when I'm looking for increases or decreases and how they slant to the left or the right. This guy did a beautiful job of writing this nice blog and I'll put the link to that down below. Um, if you're wondering how this would adjust for you for a lefty, these different increases. So it's saying here that um, the almost invisible increase, so the first increasing in a sweater usually occurs after the ribbing has been completed and just before the beginning to knit the body. So you've got that ribbing done, you're just about to knit. Uh, it says to hide the stitches, work them into the last row of the ribbing. So as you rib across, just knit or purl into the front back of the stitches across the spacing or increases evenly. Or, so I've done that where you've just completed your ribbing and you want to do like an increase to make that, um, that next step up. You've got to increase to make that bigger, wider out. I've done the knit front and knit back because it does do like a knit and then a rib kind of stitching, but they're saying, or you could try increasing using the make one method. So where you insert that, that needle, pull up that bar from the last row and put that onto your needle and then, and then knit that stitch into your, so you would pull it up, pass it over to the needle that you were just about to work on and then you would knit that so that grabbing from the last row so the make one stitch um, and then it goes on to talk about displaying decreases and increases so for a perfectly simple sweater in a stockinette stitch uh, either for raglan shaping or set in sleeves the full fashioning method below adds classic detailing full fashioning is a term often used in ready to wear means deliberately showing decreases which are worked inside a stockinette stitch frame on both sides of the work. So your full fashion as you can see here it displays those decreases or increases 
there. So the stockinette stitch frame can be from two to six stitches depending on the gauge. So in the above sample, the frame is three stitches uh, just before you're ending there. So um, for more discreet shaping, keep a frame of one or two stitches on the outside of the increases and decreases. So row one would be on your right side. You would knit to the last five stitches, slip one, knit one, and then with the left needle, pass the slip stitch over the knit stitch. So basically you're kind of casting that off and then you would knit the last three. So on row two, your wrong side of the work, purl to the last five stitches, slip one, purl one, pass the slip stitch over the knit stitch, purl the last three. So repeat those two rows for decreases that are worked each side of every row. And then the slanting raised and median methods are other ways of making increases and decreases stand out as a fine detail. So the left slanting decrease, and this again, if you're a left-handed knitter, would be a little bit different. So working on the right side of your piece, slip one stitch knit-wise, knit the next stitch, pass slip stitch over the knit stitch. Right slanting, work two stitches together by knitting two together in the regular way through the front loops. So if you want it to slant left, you do the pass the slip stitch over. If you want it to slant right, work two together. Uh, raised increases. So just like these where you can kind of see those raised up above. I think that looks kind of nice actually. So right on the right side, insert the right needle behind work into horizontal loop of the next stitch in the row below the knit one stitch into this loop and then knit the next stitch on the needle. Left side, work to the same stitch and we just gotta flip here. Page 52. Uh, from the outside edge on left side and knit from this stitch. Insert right needle behind work into horizontal loop of stitch just worked in the row below. Knit one stitch into this loop. Ooh, look at this one, that's pretty. Median increase. So on the right side, knit one stitch by inserting the needle into the eye of the stitch. One row below the next stitch on the needle, then knit the next stitch on the needle. That looks nice. I like that. I'm gonna try that. Uh, left side, so when you're working on the left, of course this is flipped if you're a lefty. Uh, work to the same stitch from the outside edge on left, knit the stitch without slipping it from the needle, then knit one stitch in the eye of the stitch one row below the same stitch. Samples are all made by using four stitch frames on either side. Cool. So there's some uh, good information. Uh, Vogue knitting is sharing with us. Okay, this is a pretty sweater and it's got detailing there too with the beads in it. I don't know if you can see, but on each V there's beads. So that's pretty, but it's just an advertisement. The pattern for this sweater is not in there. The pattern for this one's not in here either, I don't think. Okay, so this article talks about adding crocheted edges to your knit stuff. So it's just saying that sometimes you just wanna keep it simple instead of having ribbing as an edging. Uh, so if you're wearing like just a simple sleeve, making a simple sleeve on a sweater or a short sleeve shirt or something, you just wanna add that kind of simple edge that crochet is sometimes the way to go. And then um, it talks about good points. So it says to prepare the garment um, for the crochet edges by sewing all the pieces of the garment together first. 
Um, one real advantage of crocheted edges is that they can be worked in rounds from the right side of the finished piece. So everything's facing you, you can see what's happening, eliminating that need to finish later. Uh, so decide which crochet hook to use, find the columns in your working techniques and abbreviations titled knitting needles and crochet hooks on page 93. Lay a ruler across both columns to find a, which hook is re relative in size to the needle you have been using. Oh, that's kind of cool. So it tells you, okay, so this knitted needle corresponds with this, and that's on page 93. Should we go find that? Ninety three. Oh, so just telling you knitting needles. So you would just put your ruler right there and say, okay, if this guy's gonna line up with this hook. So a ten millimeter uh, knitting needle is kind of equal to a sixteen millimeter crochet hook. Really? You serious? Okay, that's shocking to me. I did not know this. So a nine millimeter knitting needle, you would use a 10 millimeter crochet hook for adding on edging. I mean, that makes a little more sense to me. The 10 to 16 is mind boggling. Okay, I'll, I'll put a still shot of that at the back of the um, video, at the end of the video if you guys want to reference that as well. That's some good information. So crochet stitches around an edge so they are evenly spaced. Do not make too many stitches or your edge will ripple. Yep, that's a good tip. When working any crochet stitch around a corner, keep the angle correct in one of two ways. Either work three single crochets into the corner stitch or single crochet, chain one, single crochet, all into that same corner. So that's good to know too, creating corners with crochet. Uh, if you crochet with your left hand, work all the instructions which follow the opposite direction. The five crochet edges below are for working in rounds only. When working on a straight edge, always work rows from the right side of the work, cut the yarn at the end, rejoin at the beginning and keep working evenly. Ah, oh, that makes sense because you always want that right side facing. Uh, so here's the first kind of edging right there. Let's zoom in for you. So that one there they're saying is uh, slip stitch. So step one from the right side, join into the seam by pulling up a loop, chain one, insert needle, and pull up another loop. So yarn over, hook, draw through two loops, one single crochet made, insert hook, hook into the next space and repeat from the star. Work single crochets evenly around the edge this way you will join with the first single crochet and step two into the next single crochet under both loops, so normal, yarn over and pull through the single crochet and then do a slip stitch. So first you would make a round of single crochets and then a round of slip stitches and then insert the hook into the back loop only and work the slip stitches in the back loops. Hmm. Cool. Uh, backwards single crochet, chain one. Whoa, that's a funky. Let me zoom in on this guy for you. This one here. Hmm. So this is called a backwards single crochet, chain one, a very relaxed rolled edge with a subtle twist. So working in the single crochet base or directly onto the edge from the right side, join the yarn 
onto one seam or corner by pulling up a loop and chain one. Then working from the left to right instead of right to left, work a single crochet into next stitch or space chain one and skip one stitch or space repeat. So you would just keep working a single crochet into the next space chain one and skip all the way around the edge end with a chain one skip one stitch and join off into with a slip stitch into the first and fasten off hmm. that's cool backwards single crochet a textured and relaxed rolled edge is this guy up here pretty So follow step one of edge A. So let's just work a single crochet, working from left to right instead of right to left, the usual way. Insert hook backwards into the last single crochet made. Work a single crochet into this stitch and each subsequent stitch around join with a slip stitch. That's cool. It kind of looks like a knot or something at the top, like a rolled knot. I like that one. Backwards half double crochet. So do a single crochet all the way around, working from the left to right instead of the right to left. Yarn over, hook insert backwards into the last single crochet made. Yarn over and pull through single crochet, form loop, yarn over and pull through all three. So basically it's just work a half double crochet going backwards into your single crochets. Uh, double crochet corded edge, a thicker, more weighted rolled edge, good for contrast and color. I guess that's this guy right here. So with the same color as the garment, follow step one. So do a single crochet all the way around, but chain three instead of chain one at the end. Note, if using a contrast color, pull a loop through before the chain three with the contrasting color. Ah, okay, so you wanna kind of join up those colors nicely. Step two, with contrast or the same color, yarn over, hook, Insert hook into the first single crochet under both loops, yarn over and pull through the single crochet to form a loop. You'll have three loops on the hook, yarn over hook and pull through two loops, yarn over hook and pull through two remaining loops for a double crochet. Work the double crochet into each single crochet around, join with a slip stitch. Fold edge in half. Oh, so then you take your yarn needle and you fold that edge in half to create that. Ooh, kind of cool. Neat. Learning some new techniques here that I did not know those crochet edges. Some more ads. It's funny to see the yarns that have just been around for so many decades. So this article here talks about reading charts. Uh, gives some really great tips, uh, read through it. So the first tip is what do the squares mean? So all of these little squares, each one represents a stitch. What do the symbols mean? So it says in chart one and two, the symbols stand for the colors. So this is your color working. And then in this one here, it's telling you that the little um, upward facing ticks uh, is the knit on the right side but purl on the wrong side and the ones that go horizontal is purl on the right side so the chart explains it there for you. Uh, what does rep mean? Many charts say rep which means repeat both for stitches and for rows. It means you must repeat the symbols within the lines over and over until you get to the end of the row. So that's pretty 
basic there for that. What's the purpose of big, B-E-G, and end? So if working with a chart which shows a large repeat, uh, you will always be able to use complete multiples of the repeat for the sweater size you're making. So it says, therefore, you can't simply repeat as described above. You must begin and end working in a certain point. So, for example, let's say you're working with a 54 uh, stitches following a chart, making size 36 to 8, 38 inches, reading from the right to left, work row one beginning at the first square, work the repeat line, repeat the 18 stitches within the lines twice, and then work the last two stitches beyond the repeat. On some smaller charts, the beginning and ending points are unimportant. On these charts, the repeats may have a few stitches of the pattern on each side. So in which directions? The most common way to read a chart is to read from the right to the left. And then the wrong side of your work goes the other way. So that's pretty standard. I kind of like the droop in this v-neck here sweater. I love looking through things just to get ideas for things to make too, color combinations. So here they've taken a kind of retro sweater and copied it over. I believe that, oh yes, so this is a pattern here in the book, it's number 39. Um, so that'll be at the back in the still shot for you guys. A lot of these are just ads. This uh, article here was just about uh, continental versus American knitting. It talks about the advantages and disadvantages from continental to American. Um, which one's faster, which one's easier to work with. Um, but it, at the end of the article, there was a really good tip that said, um, it's good to know both ways to knit, continental versus American, because uh, sometimes when you're doing that fair aisle knit and you've got two different color workings that you're doing, you can hold them, one in this hand for flicking, one in this hand for just yarning over. So knowing those two techniques, at least try it out for a little bit. So every other row, try holding your yarn a different way just to practice uh, the different technique. And I know there's a ton of really awesome videos out there for learning the different continental versus American knitting. If you wanna check any of those out, I don't really have one to reference that I love the best, um, but I would just Google continental knitting on YouTube or American knitting style, and it'll show you those different techniques. And then, yeah, just try it out while you're knitting. That's a kind of a good idea. And then when you do have two color workings going on, you can hold one color in one hand, one color in the other hand, and just, you never have to drop and pick up, drop and pick up. So that was a really good tip from that article. Some more ads here. Okay, this got me so excited when I read this one. So it's talking about, um, if you're feeling the urge to try machine knitting and you don't really want to go big like oh my gosh I want to buy this like three thousand dollar or whatever dollar um, machine knitting that there's these old um, kind of just really cheap buys that you can get that will just let you know if you like machine knitting so and I know I googled a lot of them. So this one here, and it's, this is from the 80s, so a lot of this really isn't um, the same anymore, the same information. But they still had, I found a, an old Knitting Pal on eBay, I think it was like 36 bucks or something. And uh, yeah, so it's basically, when I looked it up, I don't think you can buy new versions of it, but um, it's kind of like Loom knitting not exactly there's a different tool that you use but it has this plastic kind of thing and you would cast on your things and you would use this tool just to work your yarn and then work back and it kind of knits for you those kind of finer knit stitches sometimes with the looms 
uh, you don't get those exact fine knit stitches. Um, but it's similar to that, whereas in it's plastic and you use a tool to kind of work over those plastic posts to create the stitches. And then I looked up the Singer Hobby Knitter, and I think you can buy an old retro one uh, somewhere. I think it was like 250 bucks now. Yeah, this is US dollars, I believe, or Canadian. I forget. Anyway, it was this cool thing where you lay out all your yarn and then you just slide this thing kind of back and forth and then you follow your rows and there's patterns you would switch out for your different stitches and stuff and then you slide it back and it was like whoa that's amazing I need one of those machines and then there was a kind of a more expensive the bond knitting and I know that I saw newer versions of that um, on the market right now and I got so excited when I saw that one because I thought oh my gosh I want to try machine knitting. Have any of you guys out there done machine knitting? Um, if you have, comment down below. Do you love it? Um, what are the pros? What are the cons? Uh, should I get into it? I don't know. Is it worth the investment? I mean, if I just tried one of these kind of cheaper ones like they're recommending. Anyway, anyone out there know, let me know because, and then we'll let all the other people know who are interested in reading along here with us. Um, if that's something worth trying because yeah it looks so cool yes look at these colors I wonder you know how all trends they kind of die off for a while but then they seem to come back I wonder I know some neons and stuff I noticed a few years back kind of made their way back into trending but I wonder if anything kind of crazy like these 80s colors will be back oh look at this pretty really fine ribbed um skirt i bet you could do that with machine knitting right which is why i might need one i don't know yes i think i still have a pair of glasses like that more uh ads these patterns are so funky love them okay this article here was basically just talking about um, how knitting has been around for so many generations that it could even be possibly an ancient craft form um, dating all the way back to the Egyptians, but there's no true data really stating that, yes, that's a fact that the Egyptians used to knit. Um, they're do saying that they found, they dug up some of these older kind of things in, the, in, a, in a museum, the Edinburgh Royal Museum of Antiquities. Uh, these are on display. And then they're talking about how some knits were preserved quite nicely because they were kind of the fancy knits. And a lot of knits you don't really see uh, on display anywhere, mostly because they said for a couple of reasons. Um, one, when a knit got kind of worn out or somebody outgrew it because it's one strand, they would just pull that strand out and remake it for another article of closing. So they were always um, using it over and over. Another reason that a lot of knits didn't last is because they were made from either wool or silk. And um, the moths love those materials. So they would eat away. And even these guys here that are in the museum, they said they had um, kind of spots where you could see where the moths had eaten through them. And then um, another thing that they said why knits kind of aren't really preserved from the old ancient days is because they weren't really regarded as um, like uh, treasured items. They were just kind of old. It's warm. It's what I wear to go out to work. And when I'm, it's just so used up, I just throw it away. So those are all the reasons they said you won't necessarily find too many knits um, on display around. So that's what that article was about. Interesting. It was a good read. Cabbage Patch. How many of you out there had Cabbage Patch dolls? Love, love, loved my Cabbage Patch doll. This here is for the Cabbage Patch magazine, which I had no idea even existed when I was little. Um, but I probably would have loved a subscription to it. Hey, this looks just like my Cabbage Patch. 
that I had when I was younger. I had a couple. And then one year I got this talking cabbage patch that was really freaky because it was new technology and I was just sitting playing in my room and I must have left, left the doll turned on. And it must have been new technology from all my older toys because all of a sudden out of nowhere it just said, hey, why is nobody playing with me? And I thought, what is going on? How is this doll talking to me? Anyway, it scared me, so I buried her at the bottom of my closet. So another comment below, how many of you guys had Cabbage Patch? I know it has nothing to do with knitting, but definitely my grandmother knit clothes for Barbies and for Cabbage Patches. That was definitely part of my childhood. Comment below if you remember stuff like that as well. I'd just like to get to know you guys a little better. Love to hear what you have to say. So this is just an ad, but I thought, that's kind of neat. What did they make these sleeves out of? So just here on the description on the side, it's talking about how this is, is knit with ribbon. And then the sweater is knit with a special silk yarn, um, silk fiber. So I thought that's kind of a pretty idea. I wonder if you could make that more modern somehow, knitting with ribbon into your garments. More ads. I'll take my markers out here so we can see the pictures better. Oh, here it is, the Knitting Pal. So this is what it would look like here. I'll zoom in on that guy for you. That's that one that I was talking about kind of looked like a loom down here where you would have your little plastic pieces and then these little tools where you would work it in to take your stitches, transfer them back and forth. That's what it looks like. That's the Knitting Pal. Uh, if you guys still have them, I would love to see pictures or videos or comments about uh, how you used to use them or if you still use them. I had never heard of a knitting pal. I love this article just because in a magazine you don't see this really anymore. Where it looks like a um, newspaper article. It was just fun to see the different fonts, older style, uh, kind of intriguing. This article, though, talked about knitting etiquette, as you can see, uh, what's appropriate, what's not appropriate. This is all kind of subjective, really. Um, but the writer of this article had lots of opinions on when you should be knitting out in public and when you shouldn't. Uh, so it breaks it down. If you're just conversing with another, just a friend, um, they said just kind of, gauge the situation. Yes, do it. Um, but if somebody all of a sudden has something really serious that they want to talk to you about, it's kind of proper just to put that knitting down and, and show that person that you're listening, which was kind of a theme throughout the whole book, really. Just know your audience. And if it's something that you need to be engaged in, then definitely put that knitting down and, and show that you're fully paying attention because people, even though you can multitask, people think that it's rude that you're not really paying attention to them. It's kind of what it broke down to in this. Um, <clears throat> so them, some of them I thought were strange. Um, knitting while watching a home video rental movie. And it said, hmm, a toughie. I guess it's okay if you sit on the sidelines. And I thought, what does that mean? Why can't you knit while you're watching a movie? If you've rented it, then obviously you're sitting at home. So, yeah, not sure about that one. That was an odd one. Um, they're saying if you go out on a dinner party, knitting on the job, knitting in the transit. I like this one because it said if you're out on the bus or you're knitting in transit, then um, it's kind of, kind of a way to people will be like, want to start a conversation with you and it's a good way to meet people which I thought was kind of a nice idea but for the rest of it it was a kind of a subjective article just talking about what they felt was appropriate for knitting etiquette okay so here we're getting into the patterns that are at the back of the book so this is it and it's saying it'll label it out beginner so basic a beginner could do it but then it's saying over here number two is very easy so if you're just kind of beginning and want something that's really really easy or you just want kind of a 
easy, relaxing knit to do, kind of a mindless thing, then number two is a good one, just to chill and knit. So number one is this guy. So if you're referencing the patterns at the end of the video, you'll be working up this one. Number two, it's kind of a nice summer knit. Uh, actually, I like the back of it there. That's pretty. Number three, oh, I like this one. This is a really kind of a delicate little cable with some nice ribbing, and then it kind of goes into just knit stitches at the back, and it's saying very easy. Jeez, I might try this one. Uh, and it's saying it was knit with George's Picard Merino fascination. Um, but you can use probably, I'm sure there's substitutes out there that you could use. Um, just if you gotta really watch your gauge, make sure you do a gauge swatch so that it matches up to the exact specification so that your, your sizing will fit. So that's number three, if you wanna try this guy out. Number four is saying very easy as well. Um, some of these yarns I've never heard of. But Vendum Bond Banal. It's cute. It's a cute one. I mean, these would still all be in style. Um, very easy, number five. And, I mean, you could always adjust things too, right? If you wanted to make the front match up, but you just liked that neck or whatever. Uh, so that's number five, and it's saying very easy. Oh, here's a beginner. So not very easy, but still beginner. That's nice, kind of a turtleneck. Uh, is that a three-quarter sleeve, or is that just rolled up? It looks like a three-quarter sleeve, so that's pretty. I mean, so simple, right? It's It stays in style for decades, timeless. That's what knitting is, really timeless. Number seven has this kind of pattern, stripey pattern. And this looks like it's kind of 3D, like a popcorn stitch or something there protruding out. So that's pretty. Seven, oh, eight, I skipped eight. So this is number eight in the back. Um, yeah, that one's really hard for me to even see, really, to make it the detail on that one. Number nine, so this one's got some nice embroidering on it. Ten, plaid. I mean, plaid, classic. Maybe you just don't put the shoulder pads in. Eleven is saying very easy. It's got kind of a outlined, you can see it kind of pop out a little bit from the uh, blue, the yellow there. Twelve looks pretty um, basic. Now it's not saying very easy or anything, so it just must be a kind of an intermediate one. And 13 as well is not stating very easy or beginners, so must be more of an intermediate project. Cute polka dots though. Whoa, mama. Yes. These are fantastic. Very cowboy. Love it. Retro. Look at these colors. Pop and tassels. The handkerchief is built into the sweater. That's amazing. Oh my God. Love. Not that I'll be knitting that anytime soon, but if it comes back in style, I might give it a try. I don't know. 14. So this is your pattern for 14. That's the front of it. Oh, it's got a cactus. So much fun. 15. Love this one. Is that a bow on the side? Look, see how it sticks out here? So it's a handkerchief with a side bow. Oh my gosh. I mean, if any of you try this one, I want to see pictures of number 15 right here. Please, 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 if anybody knits it, send my the pics my way. I love it. 16. What's happening here? Oh, oh, 16 is the woman's sweater. And then 17 is this guy's sweater. Oh, that's classic. Look at that. Oh, it's got cactuses. 
I mean, that would be cool to even reference how to do the cactus repeat right there and then build that into another item of clothing. <clears throat> Some more tassel-y fabulousness going on. Oh, look at those pants. Pleather. Love it. Um, hello colors. This is summer if it ever screamed. Look at these colors. Love earrings, glasses. Okay, so this is 19 for the uh, melons, the luscious fruits and flowering. 20 is the tropical beet. 21 has a lawn chair on the beach. Oh, it's a whole beach scene. Lawn chair, umbrella, sky, sand. So bright striped and polka plays is 21. Cute. Oh, this must be the polka plays over here. Number 22. Look at that fabulousness. Yes. I wonder if that's going to come back into style, those polka dots. Polka dot pants to match. Uh, 23. Kind of looks like a robe for the beach. 24, going from red hot to real cool. That's fun. Stripes with some melons and some polka dots. I mean, you got checkers, you've got polka dot, you got all the different things, components in that sweater. It's like you took all the patterns and just mashed them into one. That is fantastic. So that is number 24. Love it. 25, oh, this is pretty. Kind of some interweave going on there. Kind of classic color. A whole outfit, Calvin Klein. Ooh. So 26, it's saying very easy, and 25 too, very easy. Um, so as promised, Fast Chic by Calvin Klein. Two that are easy to knit, even easier uh, on the eyes. Ooh. So left is the, uh, so this guy here, connoisseur pullover. Um, da, 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 and what's this one called? Oh, it doesn't really give it a name. Calvin Klein does it. A summer superla superlative yarn. Joseph Galler opposite. So this guy. Very cool. So another well-known designer. Oh, that's pretty. Look at the artists. Or the kind of arrows. Funky how it kind of blends in those colors. It looks like tie-dye. Love it. This one has, has some beading on it. So this one's number 27 in your patterns at the back. 28 for patterns at the back. They must show you how to put those beads on. Same, very easy. Hmm. What is happening? It's a dragon sweater. Oh, that is cool. Number 29 pattern at the back. That is fabulous. Look at Claws. I mean, you could do this in different color working. Oh, okay. If anyone makes this, I want to see a picture of you because that is fabulous. Uh, 30 at the back. Looks like a nice kind of evening. Could wear it out. Evening kind of sweater. You could even put some sleeves under it if it's chilly weather. Uh, yeah, so that's number 30 in your patterns at the back. 31 is this kind of longer sweater. It's pretty. It's got nice patterns. Very easy. Number 32. That's cute. I think my daughter would like that one. Ooh, 33. That's pretty. I love that neck there. That yarn's pretty too. Oh, actually, they used a whole bunch of different yarn. Beautiful. So that's number 33 at the back. 34. It's got a neck, no sleeves. Oh my gosh, do you guys remember wearing the bracelets on the arm? Longer over the waist. It's 
So that's number 34. That's pretty too. I mean, some of these are still kind of classic if you just added in the, the new updated yarns or whatever. I think these are still totally, totally um, usable in today's fashion. 35, that's cute too. Kind of a flare out at the bottom. So 35 in the back. 36. It's okay. I like that one too. It's got nice um, design right there. It's pretty. I mean, some of these yarns you might not be able to still get, but you could adjust. <gasps> what is happening? The Royals. Number 37. Oh, look, it's even got a bow at the back with this kind of nice pattern here. Ooh, fancy. 38, like ooh la la, check it. That is beautiful. Okay, so here is our patterns from here on out. Da, 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 da. So I'm gonna break these down. So this is just this first page that you'll see, the working the techniques, I'll um, still shot those for you guys so you can zoom in and read it or however you wanna do. And then uh, instructions here. So this is like pattern number one, you see, pattern number two. So when you flip back in the video, the first one, the second one. So as you can see, number two was that kind of red one with the nice back where she was wearing it over the swimsuit. So if it has a one correlating, so this is really a simple, small, condensed pattern right here, and then it goes on to two. So that's where your numbers will be here is three, if you can see. Uh, four, five, so I'll screenshot these, but just look for those numbers. It doesn't really say the name of the pattern on it when you uh, kind of get to it. So just as I flip through whatever I mentioned, it'll just correlate with the number at the top. Okay, well, thanks for watching and uh, I've got a ton more magazines to go through with a ton more articles and patterns. And um, yeah, so I'm just out here sharing this with the world. If you enjoyed it, give it a like, subscribe. I'll put, be putting uh, tons more. I've got hundreds of magazines and books to go through. So thanks for chatting with me today and I'll see you back in another video.